Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series of videos, we're helping you guys prepare for the Texas EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. In the series right now, we're focusing on science. More specifically, in this episode, we're looking at reproduction coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in this series and you want to, have to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this YouTube card here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes in the order they were taught and by topic, so you can drill down to what is most important to you. Now, if you cannot see the YouTube card that I pointed to, you can check the description below. I will have a link there as well. And I'll have additional resources such as the Big Yellow Book. I mention this in almost all my videos. It is one that comes highly recommended by people who have passed the EC6 exam in their first or second attempt. Now, I use it all the time in helping to guide and direct my content in these videos, and I have no connection at all with the author or publisher, but I have so much faith that if you buy it, you'll be more successful. Um, so please, uh, please look at the description for more details. Now, before we start today's lesson, I want to uh, first shout out to Jennifer Majors. She actually commented a few weeks ago on one of my videos how she was using my content to help prepare for her exam, and she took the time to come back in my last video to let me know she passed all the areas of her exam and science was the highest scored area. So thank you, Jennifer, so much for your support. Um, congratulations on um, passing your exam. I hope you land the perfect job for this next school year, and I wish you all the luck as you prepare future students for their, uh, for their success. And uh, thank you again for coming back and letting me know how you did. And so for the rest of you guys, if you're enjoying these videos, if these are helping you out, please show your support by giving me a thumbs up below. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to alert you of upcoming videos. I would really appreciate that. And so just a quick disclaimer about what I said in the last video. If uh, you're looking for more content from me, I've only got about uh, three more episodes of science, then we're going to move on to math. So that's coming up pretty soon. But as I was preparing for today's lesson, I realized reproduction is a pretty hefty topic. There is a lot to talk about. And so it is very likely I'm going to have to take two episodes to cover all the content. So bearing that in mind, that means I won't have just three more videos in science. I'll probably have four because I'll have to do a part two. I had to do the same thing early in this series with measurement. So bear with me if that's the case. But we'll go ahead and put a five-minute timer on the corner. And then when it hits zero, we'll do a quick wrap-up on what we've talked about. And then we'll pick up in the next episode where we leave off. So let's go ahead and start with five minutes on the clock. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, reproduction. And uh, we're going to talk about plants first, because plants have to reproduce just like any other organism. And so reproduction, of course, is a passing on of genetic material to the, your offspring. And if you have sexual reproduction, that means you have a female and male portion of two different species or two different organisms that are combining genetic material to give genetic variety. So different, uh, different I guess genetic variety kind of took care of that. But it helps them better to survive in their environments through sicknesses, through different types of environmental factors. So plants do this as well. So let's first talk about seed-bearing plants and non-seed-bearing plants. That's the main two categories in plant reproduction. So plant-bearing plants would be your flowering plants and your conifer plants. Now conifers is just a fancy word of saying cone. So any of your uh, pine trees that uh, produce cones would be conifers. Now your non-seed-bearing plants would be your ferns and your mosses. They don't produce seeds to reproduce. We'll talk about them here more in a little bit, okay? So first of all, flowering plants could be a, a variety of things, grasses, uh, most of your trees uh, that are going to produce fruits, or and then, uh, you know, these could be pear trees, oak trees that produce seeds, um, um, let's see, pecan trees could be there also, honeysuckles, most of your bushes and shrubs, most of your uh, garden variety vegetables and other fruit-bearing plants, as well as most of your garden variety plants that you might produce in your yard, uh, for neighbors to enjoy and for yourself to enjoy. So first of all, we start with pollination. You guys with allergies know all about pollination because when pollination is occurring, when pollen season is happening, pollen is blowing through the air for hundreds of miles all around and you're being affected by that as your head swells up and you sniff and sneeze, get headaches and so on. But there are two main parts of a flower that's going to produce seeds or fruits or whatever, but they're going to in the end have seeds. And so we start with a stamen, which is the middle portion of the plant, that's going to produce the pollen, and that pollen is going to be transferred to the pistil, which is your female portion of the plant. Now to get those straight in your head, stamen has the word men in it. So that's the male portion. Pistil 
you know, if a woman feels threatened that she might get, you know, in a situation where she might be compromised, she might carry a pistol to defend herself. That is a way to remember that. Females are going to carry pistols to defend themselves. Stay men has men in the word. So that's a good way to remember that. Now, it starts with fertilization to be able to produce a seed. So fertilization starts in plants when pollen reaches the, uh, the pistil from the male portion of the plant. Now, there's many ways this can happen. This can be through wind, which we mentioned a minute ago. So wind can blow this pollen around. And then also insects are attracted to the flowers and fragrance and nectar of plants. So they're going to be uh, getting inside those flowers. The pollen is going to get on their wings and abdomens and things and their legs. And they're going to move to another flower where they're going to uh, cross-pollinate uh, those plants. And then you also have animals that brush up against them, whether they're uh, going down a trail or us ourselves, we, we brush up against them. And then that pollen transfers from one plant to the other. Now, one thing you also need to remember is a lot of plants have both female and male portions on the same plant. So they can pollinate themselves. Now, when we talk about that, that would be kind of asexual, wouldn't it? That means the genetic variety doesn't change from the same, same plant to the same plant. So the offspring in that plant would be identical to, to that one. Okay, so it kind of makes sense. Now, um, kind of looking at my notes here, when we look at uh, fertilization, so when the pollen reaches the pistil from the stamen, okay, this thin tube is going to grow down from the, from the pistil and it's going to reach the ovary because it recognizes that it has a pollen that it needs to, you know, get to the ovary. And that ovary is going to send the sperm of that pollen into the plant where it combines with the egg, okay? And so um, that's pretty much the, the nuts and bolts of that. Now, you need to know the other parts of the plant that are the reproductive parts. So you have the sepals. Now, you recognize the sepals on most rosebuds if you buy flowers and you see the green portion of the plant around uh, the, the actual bud. That's going to be your sepal. It's going to protect the flowering part of the plant until it blooms. And then you have, of course, the stamen, which uh, is the male portion. Then you have the pistil, which is the female portion. The ovary, which is going to contain the seeds uh, that form. And then you have the petals, of course, which surround the flowering part of the plant. Uh, that help to attract uh, insects and other organisms. That's the part that looks most attractive. And, and then basically the pistil contains the eggs. The ovary is where the seed uh, forms for the plant to reproduce in the end. Now conifers, your cone-bearing plants, are going to have male and female cones. We'll finish with this little topic real quickly. So you can have male and female cones even on the same plant. So the male cones are going to produce the pollen and that pollen will transfer to the female cones. Well, those female cones will produce the seeds themselves, so that when those cones drop off, they could actually uh, be carried away in a flood, or they could be uh, drawn downhill on a mountaintop, where those cones will release their seeds later and produce, uh, produce another tree if they germinate. Now, some cones, by the way, this is kind of an interesting fact, uh, some of your redwood and sequoia cones will not actually open until they've been exposed to fire, and then fire actually causes those, um, so wildfires are actually a good thing in some environments, and they cause those uh, cones to open up and uh, produce the seeds that need to be uh, put into the soil for growth, okay? All right, so obviously this is not all I have to talk about. We have lots more reproduction to talk about. We still have our mosses and ferns and then animal, animal reproduction, and we'll talk more about genetic uh, things that go along with this in the next episode, so make sure you stay tuned to that. Okay, again, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you show that by a thumbs up for me. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that alert bell for new videos. And then also leave a comment below if there's more I can help you with. Let me know how these videos are helping you out or just give me a shout out as well. And uh, I'll appreciate all those comments. So again, watch the next episode right after this one and we'll pick up where we left off from this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.